The 1948 Arab-Israeli War or the First Arab-Israeli War was fought between the State of Israel and a military coalition of Arab states. In Hebrew it is known as the War of Independence or the War of Liberation. This war formed the second stage of the 1948 Palestine War, known in Arabic as the Nakba or Catastrophe. There had been tension and conflict between the Arabs and the Jews, and between each of them and the British forces. Ever since the 1917 Balfour Declaration and the 1920 creation of the British Mandate of Palestine, British policies dissatisfied both Arabs and Jews. The Arabs' opposition developed into the 1936-1939 Arab Revolt in Palestine, while the Jewish resistance developed into the Jewish insurgency in Palestine. In 1947 these ongoing tensions erupted into civil war. Following the 29th of November 1947 adoption of the United Nations a partition plan for Palestine which planned to divide Palestine into three areas an Arab state, a Jewish state and the special international regime for the cities of Jerusalem and Bethlehem. On 15 May 1948 the ongoing civil war transformed into an interstate conflict between Israel and the Arab states. Following the Israeli declaration of independence the previous day, a combined invasion by Egypt, Jordan and Syria, together with expeditionary forces from Iraq, entered Palestine, Jordan having declared privately to Yishuv emissaries on 2 May it would abide by a decision not to attack the Jewish state. The invading forces took control of the Arab areas and immediately attacked Israeli forces and several Jewish settlements. The ten months of fighting, interrupted by several truce periods, took place mostly on the former territory of the British Mandate and for a short time also in the Sinai Peninsula and southern Lebanon. As a result of the war the State of Israel retained the area that the UN General Assembly Resolution 181 had recommended for the proposed Jewish state as well as almost 60% of the area of Arab state proposed by the 1948 partition plan, including the Jaffa, Lida and Ramla area, Galilee, some parts of the Negev, a wide strip along the Tel Aviv-Jerusalem Road, West Jerusalem and some territories in the West Bank. Transjordan took control of the remainder of the former British Mandate, which it annexed, and the Egyptian military took control of the Gaza Strip. At the Jericho Conference on 1 December 1948, 2,000 Palestinian delegates called for unification of Palestine and Transjordan as a step toward full Arab unity. No state was created for the Palestinian Arabs. The conflict triggered significant demographic change throughout the Middle East. Around 700,000 Palestinian Arabs fled or were expelled from the area that became Israel and they became Palestinian refugees. In the three years following the war, about 700,000 Jews immigrated to Israel with many of them having been expelled from their previous countries of residence in the Middle East. Background Following World War II, the surrounding Arab nations were emerging from mandatory rule. Transjordan, under the Hashemite ruler Abdullah I, gained independence from Britain in 1946 and was called Jordan in 1949, but it remained under heavy British influence. Egypt gained nominal independence in 1922 but Britain continued to exert a strong influence on the country until Anglo-Egyptian Treaty of 1936 which limited Britain's presence to a garrison of troops on the Suez Canal until 1945. Lebanon became an independent state in 1943, but French troops would not withdraw until 1946, the same year that Syria won its independence from France. In 1945, the British prompting Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Transjordan, and Yemen formed the Arab League to coordinate policy between the Arab states. 
Iraq and Transjordan coordinated policies closely, signing a mutual defense treaty, while Egypt, Syria, and Saudi Arabia feared that Transjordan would annex part or all of Palestine, and use it as a stepping stone to attack or undermine Syria, Lebanon, and the Hejaz. On 29 November 1947, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution recommending the adoption and implementation of a plan to partition the British Mandate of Palestine into two states, one Arab and one Jewish, and the city of Jerusalem. The General Assembly resolution on partition was greeted with overwhelming joy in Jewish communities and widespread outrage in the Arab world. In Palestine, violence erupted almost immediately, feeding into a spiral of reprisals and counter-reprisals. The British refrained from intervening as tensions boiled over into a low-level conflict that quickly escalated into a full-scale civil war. From January onwards, operations became increasingly militarized, with the intervention of a number of Arab Liberation Army regiments inside Palestine, each active in a variety of distinct sectors around the different coastal towns. They consolidated their presence in Galilee and Samaria. Abd al-Qadir al-Husseini came from Egypt with several hundred men of the Army of the Holy War. Having recruited a few thousand volunteers, al-Husseini organized the blockade of the 100,000 Jewish residents of Jerusalem. To counter this, the Yeshav authorities tried to supply the city with convoys of up to 100 armored vehicles. But the operation became more and more impractical as the number of casualties in the relief convoys surged. By March, al-Husseini's tactic had paid off. Almost all of Haganah's armored vehicles had been destroyed, the blockade was in full operation, and hundreds of Haganah members who had tried to bring supplies into the city were killed. The situation for those who dwelt in the Jewish settlements in the highly isolated Negev and north of Galilee was even more critical. While the Jewish population had received strict orders requiring them to hold their ground everywhere at all costs, the Arab population was more affected by the general conditions of insecurity to which the country was exposed. Up to 100,000 Arabs, from the urban upper and middle classes in Haifa, Jaffa and Jerusalem, or Jewish-dominated areas, evacuated abroad or to Arab centers eastwards. This situation caused the U.S. to withdraw their support for the partition plan, thus encouraging the Arab League to believe that the Palestinian Arabs, reinforced by the Arab Liberation Army, could put an end to the plan for partition. The British, on the other hand, decided on 7 February 1948 to support the annexation of the Arab part of Palestine by Transjordan, although a certain level of doubt took hold among Yishuv supporters. Their apparent defeats were due more to their weight and sea policy than to weakness. David Ben-Gurion reorganized Haganah and made conscription obligatory. Every Jewish man and woman in the country had to receive military training, thanks to funds raised by Golda Meir from sympathizers in the United States, and Stalin's decision to support the Zionist cause. The Jewish representatives of Palestine were able to sign very important armament contracts in the East. Other Haganah agents recuperated stockpiles from the Second World War, which helped improve the army's equipment and logistics. Operation Bilak allowed arms and other equipment to be transported for the first time by the end of March. Then Gurion invested Yigal Yadin with the responsibility to come up with a plan of offense whose timing was related to the foreseeable evacuation of British forces. This strategy, called Plan Dalit, was readied by March and implemented towards the end of April. A separate plan, Operation Naxhan, was devised to lift the siege of Jerusalem. 1,500 men from Haganah's Givati Brigade and Palmik's Hale Brigade conducted sorties to free up the route to the city between 5 and 20 April. Both sides acted offensively in defiance of the partition plan, which foresaw Jerusalem as a corpus separatum, under neither Jewish nor Arab jurisdiction. 
The Arabs did not accept the plan, while the Jews were determined to oppose the internationalization of the city, and secure it as part of the Jewish state. The operation was successful, and enough foodstuffs to last two months were trucked into to Jerusalem for distribution to the Jewish population. The success of the operation was assisted by the death of al-Husseini in combat. During this time, and independently of Haggadah or the framework of Plan Dalit, irregular fighters from Ergun and Lehi formations massacred a substantial number of Arabs at Deir Yassin, an event that, though publicly deplored and criticized by the principal Jewish authorities, had a deep impact on the morale of the Arab population and contributed to generate the exode of the Arab population. At the same time, the first large-scale operation of the Arab Liberation Army ended in a debacle, having been roundly defeated at Mishmar Hemek, coinciding with the loss of their Druze allies through defection. Within the framework of the establishment of Jewish territorial continuity foreseen by Plan Dalit, the forces of Haganah, Palmish and Ergun intended to conquer mixed zones. The Palestinian Arab society was shaken. Tiberias, Haifa, Saif, Basin, Jaffa and Acre fell, resulting in the flight of more than 250,000 Palestinian Arabs. The British had, at that time, essentially withdrawn their troops. The situation pushed the leaders of the neighboring Arab states to intervene, but their preparation was not finalized, and they could not assemble sufficient forces to turn the tide of the war. The majority of Palestinian Arab hopes lay with the Arab Legion of Transjordan's monarch, King Abdullah I, but he had no intention of creating a Palestinian Arab-run state, since he hoped to annex as much of the territory of the British Mandate for Palestine as he could. He was playing a double game, being just as much in contact with the Jewish authorities as with the Arab League. In preparation for the offensive, Haganah successfully launched operations Yiftar and Ben Ami to secure the Jewish settlements of Galilee and Operation Kilshon, which created a united front around Jerusalem. The inconclusive meeting between Golda Meir and Abdullah I, followed by the Kfar Etjen massacre on 13 May by the Arab Legion, led to predictions that the battle for Jerusalem would be merciless. On 14 May 1948, David Ben-Gurion declared the establishment of the State of Israel and the 1948 Palestine War entered its second phase with the intervention of the Arab State Armies and the beginning of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Armed forces by September 1947 the Haganah had 10,489 rifles, 702 light machine guns, 2,666 submachine guns, 186 medium machine guns. 672 2-inch mortars and 92 3-inch mortars, importing arms in 1946. Then Gurion decided that the Yishav would probably have to defend itself against both the Palestinian Arabs and neighboring Arab states and, accordingly began a massive, covered arms acquisition campaign in the West, and acquired many more during the first few months of hostilities. The Yishav managed to clandestinely amass arms and military equipment abroad for transfer to Palestine once the British blockade was lifted. In the United States, Yishav agents purchased three B-17 bombers, one of which bombed Cairo in July 1948, some C-46 transport planes and dozens of half-tracks, which were repainted and defined as agricultural equipment. In Western Europe, Haganah agents amassed 50-65 mm French mountain guns, 12 120 mm mortars, 10 H-35 light tanks, and a large number of half-tracks. By mid-May or thereabouts the Yishav had purchased from Czechoslovakia 25 RVAS-199 fighters, 200 heavy machine guns, 5,021 light machine guns. 24,500 rifles, and 52 million rounds of ammunition, enough to equip all units, but short of heavy arms. The airborne arms smuggling missions from Czechoslovakia were codenamed Operation Balak. 
The airborne smuggling missions were carried out by mostly American aviators, Jews and non-Jews, led by ex-U.S. Air Transport Command Flight Engineer Al Schwimmer. Schwimmer's operation also included recruiting and training fighter pilots such as Lou Lennart, commander of the first Israeli air assault against the Arabs. Arms production The Yishuv also had a relatively advanced arms producing capacity that between October 1947 and July 1948 produced 3,009mm bullets, 150,000 mils grenades, 16,000 submachine guns and 210 three-inch mortars, along with a few David Kerr mortars, which had been indigenously designed and produced. They were inaccurate but had a spectacularly loud explosion that demoralized the enemy. A large amount of the munitions used by the Israelis came from the Ilone Institute, a clandestine bullet factory underneath Kibbutz Ilone, which produced about 2.5 million bullets for Sten guns. The munitions produced by the Ilone Institute were said to have been the only supply that was not in shortage during the war. Locally produced explosives were also plentiful. After Israel's independence, these clandestine arms manufacturing operations no longer had to be concealed and were moved above ground. All of the Haganah's weapons manufacturing was centralized and later became Israel military industries. Manpower In November 1947, the Haggadah was an underground paramilitary force that had existed as a highly organized national force. Since the Arab riots of 1920-21 and throughout the riots of 1929, Great Uprising of 1936-39 and World War II, it had a mobile force, the HISH, which had 2,000 full-time fighters and 10,000 reservists and an elite unit. The Palmish composed of 2,100 fighters and 1,000 reservists. The reservists trained three or four days a month and went back to civilian life the rest of the time. These mobile forces could rely on a garrison force, the HIM, composed of people aged over 25. The Yishuv's total strength was around 35,000 with 15,000 to 18,000 fighters and a garrison force of roughly 20,000. There were also several thousand men and women who had served in the British Army in World War II who did not serve in any of the underground militias but would provide valuable military experience during the war. Walid Khalidi says the Yishuv had the additional forces of the Jewish Settlement Police, numbering some 12,000, the Gadna Youth Battalions, and the Armed Settlers. Few of the units had been trained by December 1947. On 5 December 1947, conscription was instituted for all men and women aged between 17 and 25 and by the end of March, 21,000 had been conscripted. On 30 March, the call-up was extended to men and single women aged between 26 to 35. Five days later, a general mobilization order was issued for all men under 40. Ergun the Ergun, whose activities were considered by MI5 to be terrorism, was monitored by the British. By March 1948, the Yishuv had a numerical superiority, with 35,780 mobilized and deployed fighters for the Haganah, 3,000 of Stern and Ergun, and a few thousand armed settlers. Arab forces The effective number of Arab combatants is listed at 12,000 by some historians while others calculate a total Arab strength of approximately 23,500 troops, and with this being more of less or roughly equal to that of the Yishuv. However, as Israel mobilized most of its most able citizens during the war while the Arab troops were only a small percentage of its far greater population, the strength of the Yishav grew steadily and dramatically during the war. According to Benny Morris, by the end of 1947, the Palestinians had a healthy and demoralizing respect for the Yishuv's military power, and if it came to battle the Palestinians expected to lose.